Hi, my name is Simon Mantill from Mantilli's Biscuit Factory. I'm at the USB this morning to talk to you about turning obstacles into opportunities. I hope you enjoy the talk. The decision you make when you get up in the morning is either you're going to wear the hat of obstacle or you're going to wear the hat of opportunity. So I'm going to touch on a few of the systemic problems and obstacles that we face as business. And some of them are beyond our con control, but it's worthwhile being aware of them. And then I'm going to talk about the, the manageable obstacles that we at Mantetti's have faced. And typically, how we've kind of MacGyvered our way around those obstacles in order to turn them into opportunities. So I mean, we face political insta instability, a total vacuum of leadership uh, at high level, feeding into a fluctuating and unpredictable rand makes it very difficult for manufacturers and anyone in business who's dependent on product or service from outside our country to, to plan, to predict, to cost things. We've got massive unemployment rates. The vast majority of job entrants, I'm not sure how many new job entrants there are, but I'll estimate it to be about a million a year coming into the market. And if you consider that we've shed 355,000 jobs in the first quarter of this year, these people coming into the market are completely unskilled and they're also, many of them, also as a legacy of our system, are unable to communicate the most important business language of the world. And that's a huge problem. Then there's a massive disconnect between capital and, and organized labor in terms of the concepts of productivity and efficiency, which I'll touch on later. The first topic that I was going to, going to speak about is creating and developing markets and then working around the obstacles in satisfying that demand. I think business is an exercise in common sense, you know. So much effort, was, everyone talks about entrepreneurship, there's always a buzzword in, in business. Well, to me, that's all smoke and mirrors. Business is simply common sense and it's about implementing controls and it's about practicing what you do. It's like you cannot play golf if you don't practice your golf swing. Business is the same and everyone's capable of doing it. And I think that the key things are, in any business is you have to identify an opportunity, you have to develop an opportunity, and then you have to profit from that opportunity. And that capability can be instilled, whether it be a business owner, a director, a man senior manager, a manager, or even an employee, there's no one that cannot fulfill those functions. People are able to do that. So let's talk about, and I'm now going to sort of talk from my practical experience on how, how we dealt with issues. So, Firstly, you've got to have an idea for a startup business or as an existing business, you need to be continued, continually developing so that you're actually ahead of the game. And um, that becomes the first thing. And, and getting the right idea is often very difficult. And what happens is that typically your idea leads to a path which leads to a road, which leads to another highway. And the idea that you start off with is not where you finish off. So you've got a box, a big box of shortbread in front of you. Um, Believe it or not, that box, <coughs> we were able to make that when we first started. We made that with DeFi ovens. DeFi ovens, doing it all by hand, we had it in that box and kind of that looks like it comes from a factory with a zigzag roof out in Epping One or <laughs> Bell Industria. But what I'm trying to say is that it's amazing kind of from small beginnings how things work. So developing the market, what we saw with Shortbread, for example, no one made a product with pure butter. Everyone did it with margarine. The packaging looked terrible. It was all flow wrap packaging. It looked cheap and nasty. And our idea was to maybe give people something different. And that's where it started. And as a naive person, I hadn't been in manufacturing prior to that. Well, the logic is, well, get it into pick and pay and checkers and there are 2,000 stores and you've got uh, that line, you've got three or four different lines, you're selling 8,000 units a day, shipped by 365 days a year, bring it on. But then you realize that, that you've got an idea, you've created a product, but now you need to develop the market. Well, I challenge any small manufacturer to even be successful with one of the big retailers. They're on a hiding to nothing. They're pushing water uphill with a rake. That's, for, that's how it is. There's no other way. Any manufacturers, unless you're one of the big multinationals, you do not need the supermarket. You get that in your head, finished and clear, as Jackie Celebi would say. So now you've got this product. 
and the route to market now becomes the issue because as a manufacturer, in our case, how do we get that product into those stores and merchandise it? Because you don't just deliver to a supermarket, you've got to get it to their gate, be messed around at goods receiving, then you need one of your own representatives to pick it up out of the receiving area and then pack it on the shelves and rotate the stock. And then you've got this admin. So in fact, people aren't geared. They don't realize uh, all the obstacles in creating and developing the markets. So, so then what did I do? I needed to make like plan B. And I think that this is the thing. So we had, we had developed the products, but we weren't able to create the market. What was important to me is that I had all this lovely packaging, but the retailers were like a waste of time. We then decided our business is really food service, but I saw that there is a gap to, to provide product direct to the market at the right kind of price because people should be able to buy premium product at an affordable price. Just because it's premium does not justify it being marked up to the extent. And it's not so much at the markups, it's just all this inefficiency along the way that requires that kind of um, pricing. So we've got stores in Durbanville and Paul and uh, Claremont and Somerset West and one in Johannesburg and I foresee or I envisage there's an opportunity for maybe a hundred of these stores nationally but then what we're doing is we're putting premium manufacturers of chocolates and other products into those stores where we don't make any margin it just gives them a springboard in order to um, in order to sell their product at an affordable price. So that's typically how you, in our experience, how you develop uh, a market, identify it, and create the products. Productivity and efficiency. Well, this is XMR <laughs> me. So, <laughs> South Africa is as unproductive as it gets. Let me repeat that. South Africa is as unproductive as it gets. Um, and if you're going to have a, a positive economic growth tra trajectory, there has to be productivity and efficiency. And I think the reason why, well the main reason why we, ha why we are so inefficient is that South Africa, for better or for worse, and I actually think for worse, it was or is a resource blessed country. And there was all this low hanging fruit and there was never any need to kind of beneficiate where we could just get stuff out of the ground. There was economic exploitation. There were any number of things. And as a result, we became we became lazy as a nation. Well, not capital became lazy. I would, not the blue collar workers and the people in the mines, but capital became lazy because it was just too easy to do what we do. So, so as a result, we've got this culture of mediocrity <coughs> and we accept things for what they are. Not for, for there to be positive economic growth, you have to produce more than you consume. And if you actually look at it, we just consume more than we produce. It's, we're going, you know, if you want to save money, well, you have to save more than you spend. We actually spend more than we save. And you might say, well, look, don't compare with first world uh, economies or how they do things there. But the reality is that if we want to be competitive, well, it's no good being like North Korea and, and look inwards. We've actually got to be competitive, you know, uh, if we want to play in that game, or we must just accept the, the mediocrity. So how have we improved productivity? W where were the, the opportunities for us? So the first thing is, all of us in management, we, we don't sit, out, sit on our backsides. We're on the floor there. We're continually looking at all the detail. And the, the, the devil is in the detail. You, if you get firmly involved in all areas of the business, or if managers really understand their particular area, you, things will not get away from you. But I think what happens is people want to play golf days and they want to do this and they want to do that, but they don't actually want to be at the coal face. So if I look at sales managers who run a sales team, how often is a sales manager actually going out and doing the calls as well, going to see how his or her salesperson is operating and selling. So that, you know, to me, is vital in terms of getting that efficiency right. I mean, also, obstacles turn into opportunities. You know, previously, all our machinery comes from Switzerland, Russia, Germany, the US, Italy. Well, so we found local manufacturers to copy products that, are, that you would normally s uh, get from overseas at maybe 25% of the price. So that obstacle of the weak rand has turned into an opportunity because now we have a supplier 
He's 40 k's from our factory. If there's an issue, we're not dealing through agents who don't know anything about the product and we're having to deal with a, a foreigner who can't speak our language. We can deal with it and get it resolved straight away. Okay, so I think that, ironically, within inefficiency, that's the biggest opportunity for any business uh, in this country. Just be more efficient than your competitors. <laughs> you know, that's almost half the game won because with that you reduce your costs. So getting on to innovation, differentiation, and the mentality of imitation. So getting back to Denmark, Denmark's got 5.5 million people. It's got a GDP that's larger than South Africa, and it's got no natural resources. I mean, it's, we're a population of well over 50 million. We're blessed with all these minerals. We're blessed with a fantastic country for tourism, and yet we can't even compete with a, a country like Denmark. I mean, that actually, that shows you where we are as a country. And getting on to the innovation, I mean, just think, I mean, even big companies innovate. Look at Discovery. I mean, 20 years ago, I don't think Discovery existed. And they came up, whether people like their medical aids or not, or their plans, the point is that they shook the market up and did things completely differently. I mean, how is that possible in 20 years to probably be the biggest medical aid in the country? So it's how you change things. And, and by doing things and by doing things differently, uh, and you, where you're not a me also a manufacturer, you become a price maker as opposed to a price taker. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, what would you pay for a loaf of bread, the most expensive loaf of bread with nuts and raisins and health? Give me a figure. But I mean, not, not gluten-free, but just a normal loaf. So say 25 rand. I mean, 25 rand's pushing it. Yet, you take those raw materials and you make a muffin. You can make 10 muffins with the same raw materials that you make at health loaf, health loaf of bread, and you'll sell a muffin for 10 bucks. So suddenly the same raw materials are now sold for 100 rand instead of 25 rand. You've converted it, you've presented it slightly differently. And I think that that really is the issue. So for us in innovation, if you look inside our packaging, everything's individually wrapped. It doesn't really cost that much more to do it in a nice box, to do nice artwork. You know, it's, it's really, it's not that difficult to do, but you have to differentiate yourself. Um, so then, getting on to scalability. Um, if you're in a business where you can scale, and not every business affords itself to scalability, but if you can do it, there are tremendous benefits, and you've got to be looking all the time, but you have to grow it in concentric circles where we just focused on the Western Cape. Then we slowly, every year, we moved kind of further north. You know, it's amazing. People make something, the first thing that they want to do is they want to export it, where you should actually start closer to home and get everything resolved at, at, at home. And then playing to one's strengths. I think half the time, I think businesses aren't aware of their unique strengths. You know, the daily grind of disciplinary hearings, fighting with debtors you're not paying, Finding the correct staff, I mean, it's not easy. And I think a lot of the smaller business or medium-sized businesses almost have an inferiority complex that um, they can't do it as well as the big manufacturers or big business. But in fact, often you will find small business and medium-sized businesses do a lot of things better. Then I thought I'd just quickly conclude with a few points. I think there's a distinct lack of application by senior management in this country to roll up their sleeves I think that South Africa is pregnant with opportunity for innovative, hardworking, and industrious people. I also think that it's vital for people in fortunate positions like us to be able to assist the less fortunate to get onto that first rung of the ladder. Because as I alluded to earlier, is that people need to have hopes and dreams, but more importantly, they need to be <coughs> equipped to realize those hopes and dreams. They have to believe that their ship's going to come in. And government has proved c totally incapable of getting the majority of people onto the first rung of that la ladder. And I think that it's incumbent upon us, those who have had the benefit of a good education, those who are, who are well positioned to, to actually do that for our fellow citizens. Thanks. <laughs>